Welcome to Inside the Summit League. Lots of baseball to get to this week, plus an interview coming up with the new women's head basketball coach at North Dakota State University. And speaking of the Bison, they will host the Summit League softball tournament in a couple of weeks. NDSU is at the top of the standings right now, and they took on Fort Wayne over the weekend. Playing it inside at the Fargo Dome on Saturday, Chris Domenke was on for North Dakota State. 11 innings, 14 strikeouts for Menke. And Miranda Kramer matched her. She was the tough, uh, tough luck loser in this one, even though Kramer struck out 15 Bison batters. Plenty of defense in the ballgame. Janina Ortega behind the plate for North Dakota State. And then on the NDSU bunt, that's Ashley Bousquet making the play for Fort Wayne. And no score in this game. In the bottom of the 11th, almost three hours into the game, Logan Moreland ends it with the walk-off home run. The Bison take game one, one to nothing. Fort Wayne, though, comes back, and the Mastodons would get game two. Big first inning for the Dons. Bases loaded up for Ashley Bousquet, and she gets a run home with that one as Alex Bousquet will come in to score. Still in the first inning, Hillary Cartman with a fly ball to center, and Larissa Franklin will come in and score in the sack fly. Fort Wayne up two to nothing in this one. And then Caitlin DeYoung, that's an RBI. Becca Ferguson will score in the tough turf slide here at Fort Wayne. It's four in the first inning. They win game two, seven to four. And they come back on Sunday. They get game three. Same pitching matchup as game one. Menke had nine strikeouts for North Dakota State. Miranda Kramer had nine for Fort Wayne. She is the pitcher of the week, by the way, for the fifth time this season top of the third inning coming up here one on for Alex Bousquet and watch the effort out in center field by Alex Sobrero going over the fence trying to get it but that is gone two to nothing Fort Wayne on the home run by Alex Bousquet Kramer gets her 16th win but NDSU still on top of the standings now with two weeks left in the regular season you know, I know we had a couple weeks left in uh, Westerns next week and they got a you know, very good program they've been playing really well this year so we got to kind of look at that and haven't really talked a lot about conference tournament with these guys except for the fact that you know this year everybody's in it instead of having to get four teams in the, like in the past. So we'll still kind of focus on things that we feel like we have to do and then see how things go next week before we start thinking ahead that far. Right back to finish up with Omaha at SDSU and IUPUI at USD in a couple of one-run games in Vermilion. This isn't an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real athletes. Real athletes. Who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. The Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? The grand Falls welcomes Engelbert Humperdinck, Saturday, May 31st at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Time to buy a Honda Accord? We don't call it the Spring into a Honda sales event for nothing. What makes this Accord so special? Rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. I'm not convinced. It's an IIHS 2014 top safety pick. There's a bear behind you. <laughs> Way to stay on your toes, Roberts. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the Spring into a Honda sales event. Now, at your Honda dealer. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Back to softball now, and IUPUI is an offensive jaggernaut right now in softball. The Jags lead the league in hits and runs and home runs, and they took their offensive show on the road to Vermilion to take on South Dakota. It was just a little bit blustery at Nygaard Field on Friday afternoon for the Coyotes and the Jaguars. USD won game one. We pick it up here in game two. Hello, Madison Frayne. 
with the grab there for the Coyotes. More USD defense. Jags trying to run an alley daily. We'll have none of it. South Dakota up 2 to nothing. IUPUI with a big third inning, though, kept alive by a USD error on what could have been the double play to end the inning. Turns out, though, the Jags go on to score five in the inning. Allie Mosier crushes that. It's a two-run home run. And then three batters later, Taylor Chitwood takes that into the crosswind and out of the park. Three-run home run for Chitwood, and IUPUI leads 5-2. to two. But Coyotes come back with home runs from the first two batters in the bottom of the third inning. Yvonne Minogue up first. And then right behind her next batter, Allie Daly crushes that, cuts the IUPUI lead to 5-4. to four. Seventh home run of the year for Allie Daly. More USD defense in the fourth inning. This is going to be ruled a single out in left field. Angie Bartucci is going to try to score here. And the Yotes hit the cutoff. Christine Broders with the throw. Daly with the tag. And that keeps it a one-run game. But IUPUI gets two more runs in the sixth. Roni Patterson with a base hit drives in two. And IUPUI up eight to five. USD got two runs in the sixth to make it eight to seven. Broders, though, lines out to end the ball game. Jags win 8-7 in game two and 8-7 again in game three. In the bottom of the seventh inning, no run. I thought today we had some great at-bats in both games. Um, this whole week we've been working on just getting good pitches to hit and being on time. And if we're on time and we're getting the right pitches to hit, we're, we're, we're kind of a scary offensive team. Amen to that. Eight more home runs over the weekend for IUPUI. Meanwhile, in Brookings, South Dakota State and Omaha, Ashland Bender in the circle there for South Dakota State. Dana Elsasser for Omaha. She led the league with 19 wins coming into this game and would get her 20th. Jax would put some runners on base. Elsasser would get out of it. A timely strikeout there to keep SDSU off the board. And then a rabbit runner on again in the fourth inning. And Elsasser gets the 5-4-3 double play to get out of that jam. And then again in the fifth, South Dakota State with a runner at first. Terry Treaty makes the tag for one, gets the throw for two. Elsasser gets out of another jam here. The Mavs get four runs in the sixth inning on three walks and four singles. Elsasser gets her 20th win, 6 to nothing Omaha, the victory in game one. Game two on Friday afternoon, and big weekend, big game for Lizzie Noble. Coming to the plate here, she is just a freshman for Omaha, and she is the league player of the week. She went nine for 17, two home runs, 13 RBI in four games this weekend for Lizzie Noble for the Mavericks. Bottom of the first, Sammy Bingham sends that one to deep center, and look at Allie Mathewson go up and get it for the Mavs. Omaha scores three in the first inning. They come back with five more in the second. Sydney Hamus with a base hit there. Terry Treaty is going to come around to score. And the Mavs would rack up double digits in this one. Noble comes up. Her second hit of the game coming up here. Amber Lutmer is going to come around to score for Omaha. And the Mavs get up big, and they will win game two, 11-2 behind that big game from Player of the Week, Lizzie Noble. And the Mavericks were not done yet. Game three on Saturday. Noble again goes down the line. She had four hits in this game and drove in six runs. Campbell Ditto scores, and Omaha is up two to nothing right away. Dana L. Sasser in the circle again for Omaha. Strikes out eight. She would get her 21st win of the season in this one. And the Mavs keep pouring on the offense. Tanya Peterson, base hit up the middle. Uh, Mara Eamon will score. Omaha gets three in the third, three more in the fourth and two more runs in the fifth inning to build that lead. Devin Larson had a couple of hits for the Jackrabbits. Smokes that one through to center. Kelly Kleppen will come around to score for the Jackrabbits, but not enough offense for the Jacks against Noble and the Mavericks. Lizzie Noble again. That is gonzo. Omaha gets the sweep 12-4 in game three over South Dakota State. So... The Mavericks are 7-5 now in the league. Omaha will host IUPUI this weekend. North Dakota State will host Western Illinois. Fort Wayne does not play any league games this week. And South Dakota will be at South Dakota State on Friday and Saturday. Baseball coming up next. South Dakota State busting out the sticks in taking three out of four at Fort Wayne.
Since 1982, the Summit League has been achieving excellence. Beyond providing a quality education to more than 120,000 students, the league continues to strengthen its reputation of being nationally competitive in athletics. Today, more than 3,000 elite student athletes at eight institutions embody the vision, purpose, and innovation the Summit League represents. These young men and women are reaching for the summit in both athletic and academic endeavors. I like this Honda CRV. We've got great deals during the Spring into a Honda sales event. Slow down, hotshot. The CRV has a rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. Is that it? And the CRV is the most durable in its class. Are those McPherson struts? Indeed. Nice work, Smith. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the Spring into a Honda sales event. Now at your Honda dealer. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? After the loving. Grand Falls welcomes Engelbert Humperdinck Saturday, May 31st at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. My favorite time of day to be fly fishing is early in the morning when the sun's just coming up and you start to see the fish rise for dry flies. What I love about fly fishing is seeing the mouth come out and take that fly and go back down. It's awesome. I know I've really helped a customer when I see that they're excited about taking their new equipment and trying it on the river. I'm Mike Dufresne, and I'm one of the fly fishing experts at Shields. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. South Dakota State will host the Summit League Baseball Championships next month, and the Jackrabbits are feeling pretty good about themselves right now after winning three out of four against Fort Wayne over the weekend. Game one on Friday afternoon at Mastodon Field. Jacks get on the board first. Scott Splett gets that one uh, through third base. Matt Johnson chugging around to score, and the Rabbits are off and running in this one. Same inning, Jordan Varga. Goes inside out to left center. Splett comes in to score. And South Dakota State up three to nothing. They get two more in the sixth. Johnson at the plate with the bloop. Drives in Paul Jacobson and Aaron Mashbitz. Adam Bray gets the win. Marcus Heemster in relief for the Jacks. They win at 11-1 in game one. Game two of the series on Saturday. South Dakota State leading two to nothing in the fifth. Paul Jacobson fighting the sun and the wind and everything else out there. Can't get to it. Steve Loudon scores. And the Dons within a run at 2-1. to one. They tie it up in the seventh. Malcolm White down the line. Greg Kaiser scores to tie it up. But Varga drives in the game winner in the top of the ninth. And SDSU wins this one 3-2. And the Rabbits keep it rolling in game three. Reed Clary with a shot to second. Misplayed there by Kaiser, but he recovers. And he gets Zach Coppola at the plate on the block there by Caleb Fenimore. Jacks win the game, though. Cody Sherrill with a high fly. Left field was brutal in these two games. That's ruled a double. Al Robbins scores. Craig Hodges gets the shutout for the Jacks in the 3 to nothing win. Could they get the four-game sweep? Did not happen. Lucas Salerno here in game four. White and Whitman score. The Dons get four runs in the third. They get four in the fourth. They get four more here in the sixth inning. Greg Kri uh, Kaiser cranking that to the track. Christian Gade and Shane Tre uh, Trevino will come around to score. Carter DeBow had a couple of hits and drove in a run for Fort Wayne. He and Kaiser lead the league in RBIs right now, and the Dons salvage one win in the series. They take this one 12-2 over the Jackrabbits. And in Fargo, the two teams at the bottom of the standings right now, Western Illinois in fourth, North Dakota State in fifth. Good outing, though, for David Ernst. Nine innings, six hits, just two earned runs in game one. Wes Satzinger with two hits for the Bison, smacks that to the track. Aiden Hook and Tim Caldwell come in to score. Caldwell is the player of the week, by the way. He had 11 hits in these four games. John Skurback with a solid to center there. Drives in Nick Altavilla. And the Bison take game one, eight to two. Back on Saturday for game two in Fargo. And a little love for the glove here. Watch Aiden Hook go up and get that one as short for the Bison. 
Both teams had 11 hits in this game. Neil DeCook for Western Illinois here drives in two. Western led 3-1. to one. They go on to win game two, 6-5. to five. So they each take uh, one of the first two games, and the Bison come back, though, in game three. That pitch is wild, man, and this is going to be Ben Peterson coming around to score. He is one of 13 freshmen on that Bison roster this year. Parker Truen on the mound for North Dakota State. Five strikeouts. He goes seven innings to get the win in this one for North Dakota State. Ben Peterson again here, a poke to right center, going to drive in Kyle Kleinendorst. And the Bison come back, take game three, four to two. And game four on Sunday in sunny Fargo. Pick it up in the bottom of the second inning. Michael Leach for North Dakota State. That's going to drive in John Skurbeck and the Bison up early, one to nothing. They would come up big in the third inning. Five runs for North Dakota State in the third. Satsinger again. On the chalk hook, and Caldwell will come around to score again. Caldwell goes four for four in this game, and North Dakota State wins it six to three. So those are the first three league wins for North Dakota State. The Bison will play at first place Omaha this weekend. Fort Wayne will be at Western Illinois, and South Dakota State will go out of the league and play on the road at the University of Iowa. Coming up next, an introduction to the new women's basketball coach at North Dakota State. Buy a Honda Accord? We don't call it the Spring into a Honda Sales Event for nothing. What makes this Accord so special? Rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. I'm not convinced. It's an IIHS 2014 top safety pick. There's a bear behind you. Way to stay on your toes, Roberts. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the Spring into a Honda Sales Event. Now, at your Honda dealer. These are places of excellence where big efforts yield big results. The places where perfection is perfected, but without the players, without the performance, these are only places. The stage is set. Now, exceed yesterday. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Grand Falls welcomes Inglebert Humperdinck, Saturday, May 31st at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Well, there will be five new men's head basketball coaches in the Summit League next season. There will be one on the women's side as Marin Walseth takes over at North Dakota State. She was an assistant at Penn State before coming to Fargo, and here is why she is the best fit for the job. Because I'm a proven winner. I've been to the places where some of these young ladies and I think where this program wants to go. Uh, and I say that from a very humble perspective. Um, but I think success breeds success. And, and you have to have been there to know where you want to go. Um, some of these young ladies on this, on this team are winners and have come from very storied programs. Um, and in the last few years here, they haven't had the success that they want. They're hungry to, to win again. I think the very first thing I need to do is recruit those student athletes that are already on the team. And, and I, mean, uh, I mean that from the very, very you know, elementary, you know, open the door step down there, um, that they, came, they chose NDSU and they came to NDSU um, because of somebody else's vision. And, and now they're here and they're in a great opportunity. It is, is my responsibility to meet them individually, get to know them, gain their trust on an individual basis um, so they know where I'm coming from, um, so I see where they're coming from. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work from a lot of people. Um, but as I've said numerous times in the last uh, little while here, um, there's a lot of similarities between, between Penn State and, and North Dakota State. Um, from the history to the not winning as many games as people would like, um, to being at a point where they take off 
and, and as, you, as you mentioned, we had some hard times the first couple of years at Penn State with Coach Washington, um, but she had fantastic leadership um, to bring us to back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Big Ten championships. And in my perspective, I've walked a great template um, for what the vision and what the future hopefully is here. I, I think that Penn State kind of gets a, rap, a bad rap for being on the East Coast, but it is so Midwest um, in, in some capacities. Uh, but yes, I'm very tied to the Midwest. I'm um, growing up in Bloomington. Um, you know, my basically my entire family um, from my dad's side lives down there. I'm very close with all of those folks. Um, but I have a large contingent of family here in the Fargo area as well. Um, there's been a lot of time in, in some of these small towns in North Dakota. You know, growing up before basketball took over my life. Um, so I'm very familiar with with, with the area. Um, my sister did play basketball here. Her husband did play football here. Um, so they speak very highly of their times um, as student athletes, uh, their teammates that they've had, the coaches that they had, um, the people that they met. Um, so I am very comfortable with the, with the NDSU family. I think uh, you know, it will be very fast paced, it will be very fun to watch. Uh, the girls will look like they're playing for each other and enjoying their time together. Um, and that's a work in progress. You know, the vision of playing fast pace, uh, being a very motion oriented team, uh, not as many set plays as maybe other teams are accustomed to, that doesn't happen overnight. Um, I'm very confident and I'm very specific in, in putting kids in situations where they will be successful. There will be situations and decisions that I, I will have to be faced with that I've never been faced with before. And I will certainly look to some of the administration, some of the other coaches here as I build a rapport with them on um, how to handle some of those situations within the NDSU framework. Um, I also have you know, mentors and colleagues across the country at, at different institutions um, that have had their own successes and, and struggles and would certainly look to them um, for some guidance in situations that I may not have you know, personally, personally been in. It, it's time to move forward. It's time to look forward. Um, there's a rich history that is well documented and, and well talked about as it should be. Um, and at the same time, there's an opportunity to move forward. Um, not to discredit any of that, to embrace the history, but also look forward um, to, to build some new history. Well, the Summit League Golf Championships are finishing up right now in Texas. You can find all of the final results at the Summit League website at thesummitleague.org. When we come back, why is Omaha such a cool place to go to school? Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Grand Falls welcomes Engelbert Humperdinck, Saturday, May 31st at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Honda CRV. We've got great deals during the spring into a Honda sales event. Slow down, hot shot. The CRV has a rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. Is that it? And the CRV is the most durable in its class. Are those McPherson struts? Indeed. Nice work, Smith. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the spring into a Honda sales event. Now at your Honda dealer. This is an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real athletes. Real athletes. Who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. This Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Well, Omaha has been a member of the Summit League for two years now, and believe it or not, Nebraska's biggest city is a pretty cool place to go to school. Here's our campus spotlight. Omaha has many advantages. Omaha's a great city. This is a great place. Omaha's a great place to be. I've had a chance to travel. Omaha's got a great combination of sort of big city opportunities and small city feel. To have a nightlife, to have the arts, 
music, to be able to have world-class venues. There's a lot of concerts and there's a lot of sporting events. There's never a dull moment. You feel the sense of community here. It's as if you are in a small town, people know who you are, people are there to help you, but yet you have the excitement of a big city feel. It has that vibrance, it has that energy, but I can still get any place in 15 minutes. It is extremely, extremely affordable. Because I lived on the border of Iowa, I was able to take advantage of the MAP program, which is the Metropolitan Advantage program. The MAP program is a reduced tuition rate for 11 counties in Iowa. The MAP program definitely helped me out. It actually was the reason why I came to UNO. The people in, in Western Iowa are just as much a part of our metropolitan community as, as anyone else. This is just opening up some opportunities to students who we want on our campus. The Midwest Student Exchange Program is an opportunity for students from eight different states to receive reduced out-of-state tuition. If it wasn't for the reduced out-of-state tuition rates, I would not have been able to transfer to UNO from my university in Minnesota. It just would not have been financially feasible for me. The Old Market area is just this really dynamic area of Omaha. It's always bustling with tons of people, great shops, great restaurants, concerts. You've got your street musicians on the corner and you've got your horse-drawn carriages. I love the Old Market. There's almost every kind of restaurant that you could like down there, every kind of art. There's different coffee shops down there, there's a few art galleries. It's just a cool place to hang out. Actually there's a bookstore down there that we used to go play chess at every Friday night. Every Saturday morning in the summertime and through the fall they have a farmer's market. You run into so many people that you know from school, from work, wherever, and it's a great mixing place. Interesting architecture downtown, interesting uh, landmarks, the zoo, baseball. During the College World Series, which happens in the new TD Ameritrade Stadium downtown, uh, it's so crowded and the energy is just amazing. Go downtown before or after hockey games and uh, Midtown's great too, is with the new Midtown Crossing development and Exarban Village, which is much closer to the campus and is right by my dorm for the last four years. Really fantastic places to hang out. Omaha is a microcosm of the globe. People are proud to live in Omaha. Uh, there are a lot of folks who certainly could live anywhere in the country. They continue to choose to live in Omaha. Omaha is such a treasure and it's such a little hidden treasure at times. People don't really expect it to be such a great mix of cultures. It's just a great place to be. Thanks to everybody in Omaha. Thanks to all of our Summit League shooters. The League Tennis Championships are coming up this weekend in Denver, by the way. We'll run it down next week on Inside the Summit League.